Hi, it's the Reading Bug. Today's episode of Reading Bug Adventures is sponsored by Sourcebooks and their brand new middle grade book, Wishes and Wellingtons, from award-winning author Julie Berry. Help support our sponsor by purchasing Wishes and Wellingtons and other great sourcebook titles at thereadingbug.com or your local independent bookstore. Sourcebooks, changing lives book by book. Hi, reader. I'm so glad you could join us for another episode of Reading Bug Adventures, written, performed, and produced by The Reading Bug, our independent bookstore in California. Thanks so much for your continued support. If you haven't already, please leave a review and tell all your friends about our podcast. It really helps. As you know, we're continuing to write and record all of our original podcast episodes and music from home. If things sound a little different than usual, that's probably the reason why. Instead of recording in a studio, we've been using Zencaster to record over the internet, and we're thankful that their technology enables us to keep on recording in these challenging times. I also want to thank Resonate Recordings, who does the sound mixing and mastery for every Reading Bug Adventures episode. And of course, a great big thanks to our sponsors and to all of you for helping us continue to make this podcast. As you can imagine, it takes a lot of time to write and record every episode and every song, and we couldn't do it without your help. A big thank you and hello to our newest patrons, Makia, Hanalora, and Miriam from Seattle, and Cormac and Fallon. You're part of what makes Reading Bug Adventures possible. To become a patron and support our work, please visit patreon.com slash readingbugadventures. You can also support our podcast by shopping with us. We're an independent bookstore after all. We have millions of books for every age, gift items, staff recommendations, and even personalized care packages, all available for you to purchase at thereadingbug.com. Or you can sign up as a subscriber to our perfectly personalized Reading Bug Box subscription at readingbugbox.com with books handpicked just for you by me and the rest of the Reading Bug staff. Okay, reader, are you ready for another exciting adventure together? Me too. Let's fly. It's time for a Reading Bug Adventure. It's a Reading Bug Adventure. There's lots of fun in store. Just inside our book bag, there's new places to explore. Grab your crayons and paper, and your imaginations too. The Reading Bug and I can't wait to share our trip with you. Reader, hello! Over here! Thanks so much for meeting me here in the Reading Bug's garden. She told me she had something she really, really wanted to show us. But of course, she's still not here. I wonder what the surprise is. It's beautiful in this garden, isn't it? The late summer blooms have begun to fade, and the garden is filling with fall colors. Reds, oranges, yellows. No wonder the reading bug loves spending time here. Lauren, reader, hello. You made it. Thanks for visiting my garden today. It was really important that we stop here before our adventure begins. We have a very special mission today. A special mission? That sounds super exciting, Reading Bug. Are we going on some kind of spy adventure? Nope. It's not a spy adventure, Lauren. Although that would be a fun adventure, wouldn't it? This adventure will be even more colorful and transformational. Hmm. Colorful? Transformational? Those sound like clues, don't they, Reader? Do you have any guesses where we'll be adventuring? Reading Bug, why don't you give us a few more hints? Which books did you bring with you in your book bag today? Sure, Lauren. Today, I brought some excellent books, including The Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle, Winged Wonders by Meek Pincus and Yaz Imamura, and The Truth About Butterflies by Maxwell Eaton III. Oh, and we'll be bringing a friend with us, too. A friend? Where? Right here. Oh, you mean the little girl sitting across from us? No, not there. Right here, on the leaves of this milkweed plant. Look! On the leaves? Oh! Reader, look! There's a small creamy white dot on the top of the plant's leaf. It's really, really tiny. No bigger than the tip of a sharp pencil. That tiny speck is your friend, Reading Bug? (gasps) Is this like Horton Hears a Who? Look closely, Lauren. That speck is oval-shaped, like an egg. Oh, an egg. (gasps) Reading Bug, one of the books in your book bag was The Hungry Caterpillar. Is that a tiny caterpillar egg? Yes, yes, yes. 
It's a tiny little monarch caterpillar egg. I found it this morning. All the others are gone. What do you mean, gone? My garden is a monarch way station, Lauren. That means that it's recognized as a space with the milkweed plants and nectar needed to feed monarch caterpillars and butterflies. There are more than 29,000 way stations in the United States, and you can see them all at monarchwatch.org. That's incredible, Reading Bug. But what does it have to do with the little caterpillar egg you found? Oh, well, the other monarchs are already gone. They've all turned from caterpillars to butterflies and set off in their long trip south for the winter. The little baby caterpillar in this egg has waited too long to hatch and won't be able to join them. So our mission today is to reunite him with his family. We're going on a butterfly adventure today, Lauren. A butterfly adventure? Oh, wow! That sounds incredible. I'd love to learn more about monarch butterflies. But where will we go on a butterfly adventure, Bug? You said that butterflies fly south in the winter. Are they migrating like birds do? That's right, Lauren. Most butterflies don't migrate, but monarch butterflies are special. Monarch butterflies fly south for the winter. Many fly to Mexico, where it stays warmer through the winter months. And that's where we'll be going, too, using my magic book bag. And our imaginations, of course. We'll be following millions of monarch butterflies on the Great Monarch Migration. Incredible! And we'll finish our adventure in a small town in central Mexico called Maravatio, where hundreds of millions of monarch butterflies spend their winters each year. Oh, wow. This sounds like an incredible adventure, doesn't it, Reader? Come on! Help me grab that tiny caterpillar egg so we can reunite him with his family on our trip to Maravatio. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be eavesdropping, but I couldn't help overhearing your conversation as I sat across from you in the garden. Did I hear you say you were taking a trip to Maravatio? Why, yes, you did. My friends and I are planning on taking a trip there today, actually. I'm Lauren, and this is the reading bug and our reader friend. Do you know Maravatio? Have you been there before? I was born in Maravatio, actually, but I haven't been back in many, many years. I've lived in the United States with my mama, Poppy, and my little brother, Cristobal, since I was a baby. My name is Mari. It's short for Mariposa. It's very nice to meet you. I hope you have a wonderful trip. It was nice to meet you too, Mari. Actually, if it's not too much trouble, could you do me a favor while you're in Maravatio? Could you deliver this picture to my tita so she can place it on our family's ofrenda? Oh, look, reader. It's a beautiful picture of a butterfly. Did you draw that, Mari? Yes. I come to this garden to draw pictures of the butterflies that come here. My Tito recently passed away, and I drew this picture for him. He always called me his pequeña monarca, or his little monarch, because my name, Mariposa, means butterfly in Spanish. Tito? Tita? A frienda? Mari, I'm sorry, but I'm not sure I understand. Oh, <laughs> no problem. Those words are in Spanish. Tita and Tito are my grandmother and grandfather. When my family and I moved to the United States, my Tito and Tita stayed in Maravatio, a beautiful city in the mountains of Mexico. They used to visit me, but as they got older, they couldn't make the trip. So we've mostly been staying in touch over the computer or with phone calls, cards, and gifts. On our virtual visits, my Tita would teach me how to make our favorite foods, tacos, empanadas, and of course, fresh tortillas and delicious flan and sopapillas for dessert. And my Tito would play his guitar or sometimes take us on hikes with him in the high forests of Oyamel fir trees. He would tell us stories of our family history, tales of our great grandparents and other family members who came before us. And he would take pride in preparing our family ofrenda to celebrate Dia de los Muertos each year. Dia de los Muertos? That's the Day of the Dead. It's a very important Mexican holiday. Day of the dead? Don't worry, Lauren. It's not a scary or sad day. It's a day of celebration. We celebrate the memories of the relatives we've lost. We create an ofrenda, an offering of pictures and other things to help welcome our relatives back to the land of the living. Your dead relatives come back to life? Not exactly, Lauren. For Dia de los Muertos, it is said that the gates of heaven open wide at midnight on October 31st and the spirits of children who have died reunite with their families for one day on November 1st. The spirits of grown-ups who have died reunite with their families the next day, on November 2nd. Mari, the beginning of November is when the monarch butterflies arrive in Maravatio too. Yes. For hundreds of years, millions of monarchs have arrived in Mexico during Dia de los Muertos, and as a result, 
Many people believe that the butterflies are the souls of their loved ones who have come back to pay them a visit. This year, my Tito got very sick, and a few months ago, my Tita called us to tell us he had died. It will be our first Dia de los Muertos without him, and I miss him so much. I'd hoped we might be able to visit my Tita in Maravatio to place a picture for my Tito on her ofrenda, and to see if my Tito would visit us so I could tell him goodbye. But unfortunately, my family and I couldn't travel this year. If you could deliver my picture, it would mean so, so much to me. Mari, I think we can do better than that. How would you like to come with us to Maravatio and visit your Tita and Tito yourself? On November 2nd, for Dia de los Muertos. Great idea, Reading Bug. Mari, we were preparing for an adventure to Mexico, and we'd love to have you join us. Join you? But how? I don't think my parents would allow me to leave for such a long time. But Mari, you won't need to be gone for long. We can use the Reading Bug's magic book bag, and the power of our imaginations, of course, to travel anywhere. And we'll be back in no time at all. That's right. And the books in my book bag are all about monarch butterflies and the great monarch migration. They should be able to get us to Maravatio without any problem. Oh, wow! I can't believe my good luck. Of course I'll join you, Reading Bug. Do you need a few books about Dia de los Muertos, too? My parents gave me a whole stack to read, and I brought them with me. Here, I've got Miguel and the Amazing Alebrijes by Ronick Capen and Aaron Rivera Ashford. Coco a story about music, shoes, and family by Diana Lopez. The Day of the Dead, El Dia de los Muertos, a bilingual celebration by Bob Barner, and Funny Bones, Posada and his Day of the Dead Calaveras by Duncan Tonatuya. Great, thanks, Mari. I don't know very much about Dia de los Muertos, so these should be a huge help. Toss them into the book bag and let's get this exciting adventure started. I'm really hoping that we'll be able to visit Mari's grandparents on our adventure today. Aren't you, reader? I'm also hopeful Mari is right, and that Dia de los Muertos is not a scary day. Let's all stretch out to make sure our bodies are limber and ready for whatever awaits us on this adventure. Just like a butterfly stretches its wings when it emerges from a chrysalis, let's all stretch our arms and legs together, reader. That's it. Go ahead and stand up, unless you're buckled into your car or tucked into your bed, and wiggle your fingers and toes. Are you wiggling? Great! Now, stretch your arms up high over your head. Perfect! Stretch up high, touch the sky, crouch down low and wiggle your toes. Swing your arms from side to side, let's get ready to go. Stretch up high, touch the sky, crouch down low and wiggle your toes. Swing your arms from side to side, now we're ready to go. Thanks for those stretches, Lauren. I'm very excited for our adventure together. Yeah, this stretch has really helped. It's always a good idea to stretch before going on a trip. Our trip to Mexico shouldn't be too long. Mexico is just south of the United States, right below Texas. And we've traveled much farther on many of our other adventures, like when we went to the moon with Lumi. The moon? On this trip, we'll need to jump forward in time to November 2nd so we can find the monarch family of our little caterpillar friend and Mari's grandparents. Before we take off, I hope you remembered to bring crayons and paper with you, reader. Monarch butterflies are mostly orange and black, so make sure you have plenty of those colors. With your crayons and paper, you can draw pictures of all the things we do and see on our adventure today. Pictures are how we retell the story of our adventure once we've returned, just like the illustrations in our favorite books. Ready, everyone? Mari, get ready. This part is pretty amazing. Magic book bag, please take us to Mexico where Mari can visit her beloved Tito. Among the monarchs who I know from the books I have read, fly a thousands of miles to celebrate the Day of the Dead. Wow! Lauren, reader, look! The Reading Bug's book bag is getting bigger and bigger and bigger! And look inside, I can hardly believe it. There are pictures swirling around and around, I can see the mountains of central Mexico and the tall, stately Oyamel fir trees that my Tito loved to hike through. I see yummy foods, tacos, empanadas, mole, and sweet bread. And everywhere I look, I see brilliant black and orange monarch butterflies flying through the skies, sipping nectar from brightly colored flowers and resting on the Oyamel fir trees. I see them too, Mari. 
There are so many monarchs on the trees that it looks like they've turned into butterfly trees. And there are lots of new words for us in the book bag, too. Words like kaleidoscope, chrysalis, Methuselah, bivouac, papel picado, calaveras, and pan de muertos. Okay, everyone, it's time. Mari, can you grab the leaves with the tiny caterpillar egg on them? Sure. Thanks. I read in The Monarch, Saving Our Most Beloved Butterfly, that the monarch population has declined by 90% over the past 20 years, and that less than 5% of monarch eggs survive to adulthood. Every little monarch life matters, and we're going to help this little egg beat the statistics. Now, let's hop three times and then jump into the book bag. Do you know how to count to three in Spanish? That's right. Uno, dos, tres. Count with me now. Uno, dos, tres, and jump! Let's jump inside our book bag. What will we find there? Imaginations run away. What's in our book bag? Our trusty book bag. What will we learn about today? Look what's happening, Mari. The lights are flashing, and the pictures and words are circling all around us. Here we go. Look, everything below us is quickly fading away as we fly higher and higher into the sky. And look at the tiny caterpillar egg reader. As we move forward in time toward November, it's beginning to change. The caterpillar is hatching. The tiny egg is beginning to crack. It looks like our caterpillar is starting to hatch. His tiny head peeks outside of the egg and out of it crawls six little legs. He's hungry. He eats the eggshell and leaves. He's growing so fast, he's popping his seams. But he'll grow a new skin if you give him a minute. And he'll shed the old one when he's too fat to stay in it. Did you know that a monarch butterfly lives through four different lives? He begins as an egg on a milkweed leaf. Then he turns into a worm that does nothing but eat. In his third life, he forms a chrysalis and prepares for his final metamorphosis. Emerging as a butterfly one day where he'll spread his wings and fly away. Whoa, reading bug, what's happening? Does the book bag always do this? It's rolling around and around like a boat in a thunderstorm or a popcorn kernel before it pops. I'm starting to feel a little air sick. No, Mari, this is not normal. Our rides in the book bag are usually very smooth. No turbulence at all. I don't know what's happening. Everyone hold tight. Wow, oh wow, oh wow. Look all around us, reader. It's the most spectacular, beautiful sight I've ever seen. The sky is filled with a swirling tempest of orange, yellow, and black, bouncing us around as the wind blows. Every time the wind blows, the pattern changes its shape and size. It's like looking through a kaleidoscope, but instead of colored beads, pebbles, and pieces of glass, the swirling bits are thousands of monarch butterflies. They're flying and swirling around and around, bringing us with them toward the ground. A kaleidoscope. That's what they call a swarm of butterflies. And now we know why. But I wonder why they're all heading toward the ground. I don't think we're in Mexico yet. Is something wrong? I don't know, Mari, but I think we're coming in for a landing with all these butterflies, whether we like it or not. Oh! Reader, reading bug, Mari, are you all okay? We landed pretty hard. Hurry, let's all hop out of the bag and see if anything is wrong with all the monarch butterflies. Maybe we can help them. They're... they're gone. There's no sign of the butterflies anywhere. Where did they all go? How could the thousands of butterflies that were circling all around us have disappeared into thin air? I don't know, but can you hear that thunder? The wind is howling too. I think there's a storm coming this way, and I'm guessing the butterflies sensed it too. I read that butterflies fly to the ground to find a place to stay dry before it starts to rain. Butterflies are very delicate creatures, and when large raindrops fall on them, It would feel to them like it might feel if you were pelted by water balloons the size of bowling balls. The butterflies try to find shelter under leaves or rocks or under the canopy of a stand of trees until the rain passes. If they can't find shelter from the rain, their wings become tattered and damaged. Lucky for me, ladybugs like me have a bit more protection in the rain, 
My hard shell is like a little umbrella, protecting my wings beneath it. Shell or no shell, I don't think we want to be stuck in this storm. The rain has started to fall and it's getting pretty wet out here. Let's do what butterflies do and find some shelter. Follow me. Great job! It's not perfect, but the branches of this tree are keeping most of the rain off of us. Braiding bug, reader, Mari, it looks like we're in a large meadow of wildflowers. That makes sense. Butterflies like wildflowers, and they also provide plenty of space for the monarchs that landed here with us to shelter and stay dry. Okay, but where are we? We definitely haven't reached Maravatio yet. It's high up in the mountains of central Mexico, and this field doesn't look like it's anywhere close to a mountain, or even a hill. Here, it's flat for as far as you can see in every direction. I read in The Monarch, saving our most beloved butterfly, that monarchs fly over Texas on their way to Mexico. I bet we've landed in the Texas flatlands. Even if it wasn't raining so hard, the butterflies might have stopped here anyway to feed on all these flowers. The trip to Mexico is long and hard, and the butterflies stop many times along the way to drink nectar from flowers through their tongues, which are a lot like straws. The sweet nectars give the monarchs the energy to keep flying, and even though they don't know they're doing it, the butterflies collect pollen on their legs and bodies that they then transfer to other plants, helping the plants to reproduce. Reading bug? Reader? Mari? Look! Our little caterpillar friend isn't an egg any longer. You're right, Lauren. He's a fat, striped caterpillar. And judging by all the holes on the leaf he's on, a very hungry caterpillar at that. I read that when the caterpillar hatches from its egg, it starts eating almost immediately and grows really, really quick. When it hatches, a monarch caterpillar is only about five millimeters long. That's about as long as your fingernail, reader. But in just two to three weeks, they grow to almost ten times that size. Monarch caterpillars love milkweed, and they eat a lot of it in order to grow that quickly. In that time, he needs to shed his skin, or exoskeleton, five times to give him more and more room to grow. The process of shedding his skin is called molting. This caterpillar looks pretty big, like he's been eating for a couple of weeks already. That's right, Lauren. Based on this caterpillar's size, the good news is, I think we still have time to reach Maravatio. It isn't November 2nd yet. The book bag must have brought us about three weeks into the future, which is about as long as it takes the monarch butterflies to reach Texas on their migration. Caterpillar eggs take about a week to hatch, and this hungry larva looks like he's been eating and eating for two to three weeks to have grown this big and fat. I think he's cute. His black, yellow, and white stripes make him look very distinguished. The bright colors of his skin send a message to any bird or other predators who might be considering him for a snack to look for food somewhere else. Monarch caterpillars are poisonous to predators such as frogs, grasshoppers, lizards, mice, and birds, a result of their eating so much milkweed. Poisonous? Yes! A big fat caterpillar like this one is really, really slow, and, like I mentioned, he needs to spend all of his time eating, not running away from predators. In The Truth About Butterflies, it says that different kinds of caterpillars have developed different kinds of tricks to avoid being eaten. Monarchs are poisonous, but other caterpillars can be smelly or prickly or really ugly, all to keep themselves safe. I hope this little caterpillar can stay safe long enough to grow into a beautiful monarch butterfly. In fact, I think that might make a good name for him. Esperito, which means hopeful in Spanish. Esperito! I love it, Mari! I also hope we can get you to Maravatio in time to celebrate Dia de los Muertos with your Tito and Tita. Mari, reading bug, reader, this storm looks like it's getting worse. Why don't we hop into the book bag and continue on our migration south with the butterflies? I don't think we want to wait here any longer. Sure, Lauren. Mari, grab Esperito and let's fly! Magic book bag, take us up in the sky to follow the path of the butterflies. Let's continue southward to Mexico without delay. Let's go, go, go! On the count of three, everyone back into the book bag. One, two, three, jump! Here we go! I don't think I'll ever get used to this. The lights are flashing, and the pictures and words are circling all around us. Whoa! And look at our caterpillar friend as we travel forward through time. He keeps shedding his skin in a way that's quite jolting. But no need to worry, as Burrito's just molting. He'll molt four or more times till he's fat as he can be. Then he'll attach himself to the branch of a tree. He'll hang upside down, getting ready to change. In his next phase of life, 
which is really quite strange. His skin will look different, but nothing's amiss. His skin has turned into a green chrysalis. Did you know that a monarch butterfly lives through four different lives? He begins as an egg on a milkweed leaf. Then he turns into a worm that does nothing but eat. In his third life, he forms a chrysalis and prepares for his final metamorphosis. Emerging as a butterfly one day Where he'll spread his wings and fly away We're really cruising now. We're way up high and the book bag is flying quickly through the air. And look, monarch butterflies are flying beside us again. We must be riding the high winds like the butterflies do. As butterflies pass into Mexico, the water in the Gulf of Mexico changes wind patterns. High up in the air, in warm wind currents, the butterflies are able to fly even more quickly, pushed along by the wind. Woohoo! At this pace, we'll be in Maravatio in no time. Hey, what's happening? The book bag and some of the butterflies all around us are slowing down and starting to fall out of the sky again. Oh no, we're heading quickly for the ground far below. Hold on! Oh. Hmm, that was strange. I wonder why we've stopped again. I didn't see the mountains of central Mexico or the Oyamel fir forest below us, so we can't have made it to Maravatio yet. Let's take a peek outside and see what's going on. Come on. Hmm, looks like it's getting dark out here and colder. That makes sense, Lauren. Monarch butterflies only fly during the day. Cold temperatures make their bodies slower, so they wait until the sun warms them up to continue their journey. Monarchs can't fly at all if it's below 55 degrees Fahrenheit. They also use the sun to help find their way, so they have to stop traveling whenever it gets too dark or too cold. Oh, wow! Lauren, reader, reading bug, look up above! The entire branch is covered with beautiful orange, black, and white monarch butterflies. And look, there are more coming down from the sky to join them! How beautiful! That's a roost of monarchs, Mari, which is also called a bivouac. And it is incredible. All the butterflies who are resting cluster together, hanging upside down in the tree to help them avoid winds and predators. Are they sleeping there, reading bug? Not really, Lauren. Butterflies don't have any eyelids, so they can't close their eyes and sleep like humans do. Instead, they go into a state of deep rest, called torpor. Rest? That sounds pretty good right now, doesn't it, reader? This has already been an incredible journey and I'm exhausted. It's amazing that tiny butterflies fly this far every year. No wonder they need time to rest and recharge for another long flight tomorrow. While we and the butterflies rest, let's pause our adventure right here. In just a few minutes, I'll play music for you to color to and you can draw illustrations of our adventure to share with your friends and family. And while you wait for our adventure to continue, make sure you get lots and lots of good rest. We're going to need all our energy to finish this monarch migration and get ourselves to Maravatio for Dia de los Muertos with Mari and her Tito and Tita. Just like the beautiful butterflies, I'm sure you can do it. When you're a reader, you're a leader. You're ready to learn about everything as you grow. You'll show this world that you can be anything. You could write a book or fly a plane. Build a house with a giant crane Whatever you do, one thing will be true There's nothing you can't do You can see it through Just by being you Thank you for joining me, Mari, and the Reading Bug on this adventure today, reader. We can't wait to see you next time to celebrate the Day of the Dead together. In the meantime, if you want to read more about butterflies and Dia de los Muertos, you can find a list of all the books in the Reading Bugs book bag at thereadingbug.com slash adventures. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. It's a Reading Bug adventure. There's lots of fun in store. Just inside our book bag, there's new places to explore. Grab your crayons and paper and your imaginations too. The Reading Bug and I can't wait to share our trip. Today's episode of Reading Bug Adventures is sponsored by Sourcebooks and their brand new middle grade book, Wishes and Wellingtons, from award-winning author Julie Berry. 
Ew, sardines. <laughs> sardines? What are you talking about, reading bug? Are you reading again? Oh, hi, Lauren. Yes, I sure am. I'm reading a brand new middle grade fantasy adventure called Wishes and Wellingtons, and it's really, really good. It has humor, heart, and a feisty heroine who you'll absolutely love. Ooh, sounds like fun. But sardines? Oh yeah, right. <laughs> the sassy heroine in this story, Maeve Merritt, finds a really cranky genie in a sardine tin. Can you believe it? No wonder he's cranky. Can you imagine being cooped up in a smelly sardine tin? Yuck! No. Soon, an orphan boy, a mysterious man, a disgruntled school worker, and a business tycoon are all in hot pursuit of Maeve and her magical discovery. Oh, I just love Julie Berry's books. I can't wait to dive into this one. You'll love it, and so will you, reader. Maeve is a quick-thinking, exciting troublemaker who makes every chapter of this book a page turner. You can purchase Wishes and Wellingtons at. TheReadingBug.com or your local independent bookstore. Thank you to Sourcebooks for their support. Sourcebooks changing lives book by book. And thanks to all of our individual sponsors as well. If you're interested in becoming a patron, please visit our page at Patreon.com. Thank you for listening to Reading Bug Adventures. I'm Lauren Savage, and today's adventure was an original story written by Diane and Brandon Savage. This episode was performed by me, Chloe, and Brandon Savage, and by Chesney Everett and Myrna Perla. Original music was performed by me, and lyrics were written by Brandon Savage. The Reading Bug is our family-owned, independent children's bookstore in California, and we're passionate about educating, entertaining, and engaging children of all ages. Learn more about us at thereadingbug.com and our personalized subscription box service at readingbugbox.com. Thank you.